In the early 1950s, military aircraft design followed a relentless trend, larger, heavier, more complex, and vastly more expensive machines. The dawning jet age and the pressures of the Cold War undoubtedly demanded higher performance, but this escalation came at a steep price, threatening to produce aircraft too costly to procure in numbers and too large for the decks of the U.S. Navy's vital aircraft carriers. Faced with replacing the venerable 80 Skyraider workhorse, the Navy anticipated needing a new jet attack aircraft potentially tipping the scales near 30,000 pounds. But one designer envisioned a different path. Edward H. Heinemann, Douglas Aircraft's renowned chief engineer, fundamentally challenged this prevailing spiral, which he termed Heinemann's Law of Weight Growth. Armed with a radical philosophy, simplicate and add lightness, Heinemann would engineer a stark counterpoint, the A-4 Skyhawk. This aircraft was destined for an exceptionally long and distinguished career, its success rooted precisely in its defiant simplicity and resultant effectiveness against the mainstream complexity. The recently concluded Korean War had provided hard-won, invaluable lessons. piston engine Sky Raiders proved rugged in ground attack, but demonstrated clear vulnerability to increasingly effective anti-aircraft artillery and emerging jet fighters. Conversely, the Navy's early carrier jets, like the F-9F Panther, excelled in air combat but often lacked the specific payload capacity, endurance, or low-speed handling characteristics essential for effective close air support delivered from the sea. Compounding these operational lessons was a critical logistical challenge. The numerous Essex-class carriers forming the backbone of the fleet possessed flight decks, hangar bays, and elevators that struggled to accommodate the growing dimensions and weight of new jet designs like the FJ Fury and F-9F Cougar series. Maintaining a potent and numerically significant carrier attack force, while managing costs and operating from existing platforms, became an urgent imperative for naval aviation. The Navy critically needed a new, effective, yet affordable carrier-based attack aircraft capable of delivering both conventional ordnance and tactical nuclear weapons. Heinemann was convinced the answer lay not in further complexity, but in ruthless efficiency. Rather than passively awaiting formal Navy requirements that might perpetuate the weight trend, Heinemann's team at Douglas El Segundo took the initiative. Leveraging a deep understanding of naval requirements and driven by concern over contemporary design directions, they proactively proposed a dramatically smaller and lighter aircraft. Their goal was audacious, meet core performance requirements at roughly half the Navy's anticipated weight. This was not merely a weight-saving exercise. It directly impacted procurement cost, the number of aircraft that could be purchased, logistical support demands, and, crucially, carrier compatibility. Achieving this objective demanded rigorous engineering discipline. Every component and system was meticulously scrutinized. Unnecessary complexity was ruthlessly eliminated. Standard parts were rejected if lighter custom solutions could be devised. Structures were simplified wherever possible, and systems integration prioritized straightforwardness. The tangible result of this radical philosophy was compelling. On June 22, 1954, at Edwards Air Force Base, California, the XA-4D-1 prototype took to the skies for its maiden flight, piloted by Douglas Chief Test Pilot Robert Rahn. This flight was more than just a technical milestone. It was the first concrete proof that Heinemann's lightweight concept was viable. Crucially, it validated a key metric— the prototype's empty weight was only around 9,800 pounds. The subsequent operational A4A and A4B variants maintained this advantage, weighing in at approximately 10,000 to 11,000 pounds empty. This achievement was remarkable in itself a new jet aircraft lighter even than the piston engine Sky Raider it was designed to replace. This inherent lightness directly translated into lower unit costs allowing the Navy to procure the aircraft in greater numbers within constrained budgets 
and significantly eased handling challenges on crowded carrier decks. The Skyhawk's drastic weight reduction was achieved not through the use of exotic, unproven materials, but through systematic, clever, integrated design. Perhaps its most visually striking innovation was its extraordinarily compact airframe. The robust delta-wing housing integral fuel tanks and featuring automatic leading-edge slats to ensure acceptable handling characteristics at the low speeds, critical for carrier approaches and landings spanned only about 27.5 feet. This diminutive size was key. It allowed the Skyhawk to fit comfortably onto existing carrier elevators and within hangar bays without resorting to the heavy, complex, and maintenance-intensive wing-folding mechanisms required by nearly all other contemporary carrier aircraft. This design choice alone, saving an estimated 200 pounds and countless maintenance hours, perfectly exemplified Heinemann's philosophy in practice. Optimizing the core design eliminated an entire subsystem previously considered essential. To meet the demanding structural strength requirements of carrier operations within the stringent weight budget, Douglas engineers employed primarily conventional semi-monocoque construction using high-strength aluminum alloys. However, the design was highly optimized utilizing features like an efficient multi-spar wing structure to carry fuel and withstand high G-loads. Maintainability was also a core consideration, demonstrated by innovations like the split rear fuselage design, which allowed for relatively easy engine access and removal compared to many contemporaries requiring more complex procedures. The principle of simplification extended to the aircraft systems, the initial flight control system relied primarily on manual inputs for elevators and ailerons, with hydraulic boost provided only under certain conditions, contrasting sharply with the fully powered systems becoming common on larger jets. This choice, along with the selection of the relatively simpler and lighter Douglas Escape Act ejection seat series over heavier alternatives, represented deliberate trade-offs made to rigorously adhere to weight and cost targets, even if it potentially demanded more pilot effort in some flight regimes. Powering the early Skyhawks was the Wright J65 turbojet engine, a license-built version of the British Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire, producing approximately 7,200 to 7,800 pounds of static thrust. It provided adequate power for the lightweight airframe. Fed by simple, fixed geometry, semicircular air intakes located on the fuselage sides, the selection of this non-afterburning engine aligned perfectly with the simplicity ethos, avoiding the weight, complexity, and significantly higher fuel consumption associated with afterburners. Of course, the specific fuel consumption, typical of early turbojets, inherently limited the aircraft's potential range. Avionics were similarly minimalist, reflecting the technology of the era and the focus on essentials, basic UHF radio communication, TAC and navigation aids, ADF, and an IFF transponder. Notably, early models lacked any built-in radar. Weapon delivery relied on a basic optical gun sight. The initial armament consisted of two internal Colt Mark 12 20 mm cannons mounted in the wing roots, and three external hardpoints capable of carrying approximately 5,000 pounds of conventional bombs, unguided rockets, or external fuel tanks. It was an aircraft stripped down to its core purpose, designed for efficient attack capability. On September 26, 1956, the A-4 Skyhawk officially entered U.S. Navy fleet service with Attack Squadron VA-72, followed shortly by adoption by the U.S. Marine Corps. Quickly earning the affectionate nickname Scooter for its nimble performance and diminutive size, it became a ubiquitous presence on carrier decks throughout the 1960s and 1970s. Its exceptional carrier suitability allowed it to operate effectively not only from the large Forrestal, Kitty Hawk, and Enterprise-class supercarriers, but also, critically, from the numerous older and smaller Essex-class carriers, 
significantly extending the striking power and useful life of these vital assets. Its simple, rugged design also proved reliable and relatively easy to maintain under demanding shipboard conditions, contributing to high potential sortie rates, a crucial metric for sustained combat operations. The true crucible for the Skyhawk, however, was the Vietnam War. From roughly 1964 until the end of U.S. involvement in 1973, Navy and Marine Corps Skyhawks flew countless punishing missions performing critical ground attack, close air support, and interdiction rolls across North and South Vietnam and Laos. In the heat of combat, the A-4 proved itself a rugged and effective weapons platform, reliably delivering ordnance loads under fire. But the conflict also starkly highlighted its vulnerabilities. Particularly during the numerous low-level attack missions flown, the Skyhawks suffered significant losses to the dense and increasingly sophisticated North Vietnamese air defenses, comprising heavy concentrations of anti-aircraft artillery and surface-to-air missiles, such as the Soviet-supplied SA-2 guideline. These losses underscored the harsh reality of operating subsonic attack aircraft without adequate electronic countermeasures, or specialized suppression of enemy air defenses support in a modern, high-threat environment. The lessons learned often paid for in blood directly spurred the development and introduction of crucial survivability upgrades for later Skyhawk variants. While unequivocally designed as an attack aircraft, the scooter's inherent agility occasionally led to unexpected aerial encounters. Though requiring extremely careful verification, accounts exist of a A-4s, achieving air-to-air -air victories. The most frequently cited, albeit disputed, instance involves U.S. Navy pilot LTJG Ted T.R. Swartz, sometimes credited with downing a North Vietnamese MiG-17 on May 1, 1967, purportedly using unguided Zuni air-to-ground rockets. Such claims, particularly involving unconventional weapons use, are often difficult to confirm officially and remain debated. Similar reports, also needing verification, suggest Israeli Air Force pilots achieved MiG kills during Middle Eastern conflicts, potentially using the 30mm DIFA cannons or Sidewinder missiles fitted to their modified A-4s. Regardless of the definitive confirmation of these specific incidents, these accounts contributed to the A-4's giant killer mystique, highlighting its maneuverability and unexpected versatility beyond its primary attack role. Perhaps more concretely impactful in enduring was the Skyhawk's unique suitability for a revolutionary role later in its career, adversary air combat training. Recognizing the need to better prepare fighter pilots for encounters with potential adversaries characterized by different performance and visual and radar signatures, the U.S. military pioneered dissimilar air combat training. The A-4, with its small size, remarkable agility, relatively simple systems, and cost-effective operation, proved to be an ideal platform for simulating enemy fighters. The famous U.S. Navy Fighter Weapon School and numerous dedicated adversary squadrons operated large numbers of A-4s for decades. Flying these aggressor Skyhawks significantly enhanced the realism and effectiveness of air combat training for generations of U.S. and Allied fighter pilots. The U.S. Navy only officially retired its last A-4s, used in the adversary role in 2003, marking the end of nearly five decades of service within the U.S. military. From the first prototype's flight until the production line closed in 1979, nearly 3,000 Skyhawks were built. Although phased out of frontline U.S. Navy and Marine Corps attack roles by the mid-1990s and retired by most major export users by the 2010s due to airframe fatigue, technological obsolescence against modern threats, and dwindling logistical support, the Skyhawk story found yet another chapter. A significant afterlife emerged as substantial numbers of retired A-4s were acquired and refurbished by private military contractor companies like Draken International and Top Aces. 
leveraging the A4's enduring qualities, reliability, agility, and relative simplicity leading to cost-effective operation, these companies provide contracted adversary air services, simulating threats for modern air forces during training exercises. This ongoing role represents a final, perhaps unexpected, validation of the inherent soundness and economic value embedded in Heinemann's original design philosophy. Looking back across its extensive service life, the Douglas A. 4 Skyhawk Street Ans has a powerful and enduring testament to Ed Heinemann's visionary approach. Its success powerfully demonstrated that disciplined focus on core essentials, simplicity, reliability, affordability, and tailored performance could yield a combat aircraft that was not merely adequate, but exceptionally effective, adaptable, and long-lasting. In an era often defined by escalating complexity, the dependable scooter carved a unique legacy. It served as a cornerstone of U.S. Navy and Marine Corps light attack capability during the critical Cold War and Vietnam periods, significantly bolstered the air arms of numerous allied nations, and played key roles in major regional conflicts from the Middle East to the South Atlantic. Its fundamentally sound airframe proved remarkably adaptable, accommodating numerous upgrades that kept it relevant far longer than many heavier, more complex contemporaries, showcasing the enduring value of a solid baseline design. The A4's history leaves behind significant lessons. For engineers, it demonstrates the impact of clear vision, disciplined design, and the courage to challenge convention. For military planners, its history informs ongoing debates about procurement strategy, the balance between specialized and multi-role platforms, and the critical importance of affordability. Experiences with the Skyhawk, both successes and losses, provided invaluable operational lessons in close air support, anti-ship attack, aircraft survivability, the crucial role of adversary training, and the unceasing need for rigorous carrier operations safety. Beyond the technical and strategic, the human element remains integral to its legacy, the skill, bravery, and sacrifice of the pilots who flew it, and the ingenuity of the teams who designed and maintained it. Offering inspiration through its blend of innovative thinking and effective seat-of-the-pants capability, the A-4 Skyhawk secured its place as an iconic aircraft. Its distinctive shape, recognized from appearances in popular culture like Top Gun and preserved in museums worldwide, ensures its continued visibility. More than just an aircraft, the Skyhawk represents a masterclass in efficiency, a pivotal chapter in carrier aviation, and an enduring symbol of focused design achieving remarkable decades-spanning success. It remains a potent reminder that sometimes, the most effective solution is indeed the simplest one.